Good morning, and welcome to the first of our seven-part series covering the LMV5 Burner Management System. I'm Aaron Zeller, Director of Sales at SCC, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Following previous webinars, many of you have asked for LMV5 technical training to be provided in the same format, virtually. So here goes. Today, we'll begin with the LMV5 overview. Then, over each of the next six Tuesdays, we'll cover another LMV5 topic, working our way through the technical manual and providing you with the expertise needed to properly install, commission, and troubleshoot a typical LMV system. Since this webinar is more technical in nature, and I'm just a simple salesman, we're bringing in the big gun, David Lehrer. Many of you will recognize Dave from his 15 plus years handling technical support for Siemens Combustion Controls business. David is also our lead trainer, having trained thousands of people on the LMV5 system. I'm going to go on mute now, and I'll keep an eye on any questions that come in during David's presentation for us to discuss afterwards. So without further ado. Different things. Welcome again, my name is David Lair. I'll be your moderator for today. I do the technical support, as Aaron advised you, and the training classes, primarily here at SEC's Elk Grove Village Training Center. Over the past 15 years, I've also visited many of you for training at your company and many other locations as well. Our offices can be reached for technical support from 6.30 in the morning until 5 p.m. Chicago time with the information and numbers that you see here. SCC also has a very extensive website at sccombustion.com, and I highly recommend it for using it for product information, sales and customer support, and a wealth of technical information. The LMV5 system shown here has primary features that include a highly configurable flame safeguard, a parallel positioning system for fuel air ratio control and integrated valve proving, and up to five actuators working at once for fuel air, an internal PID controller, as well as optional O2 trim and variable frequency drive control. The technical instructions can be downloaded from the SCC website or ordered free of charge by contacting your sales rep or customer service. Some of you may have been mailed a copy of this for the webinar today. Section and page references in this presentation refers to this document. As previously mentioned, this is the first in a seven part series. And today we present the overview and we'll cover the LMV5's features and equipment. Future webinars in the next six weeks include 102, the wiring, which will be June 9th, 103, parameters and commissioning, which will be on the 16th, 104, troubleshooting on the 23rd, 105 on the 30th with the VKD, also known as a variable speed drive. 106 is the oxygen trim on July 7th. And finally, on section seven and eight, we'll cover on July 14th, the Modbus and ACS 450 PC software. So let's get started. The LMV5 is available to the American market in four versions. While I've only chosen to show part numbers for the 120 volt, 230 volt versions are available as well. These are presented in order of increasing features. First is the LMV51040, a linkageless flame safeguard controlling three actuators with software and terminals for two fuels, gas and oil. This version requires an external load controller, and which means specifically a limit device to turn the burner on and off, as well as a firing rate signal. The signal must be a three position input, 120 volt increase, 120 volt decrease, or no position, hold the current firing rate. Second is the LMV51140 with all the previous features, but includes an internal PID load control. Simply connect a temperature or pressure sensor and program the on and off points as well as PID settings. Third is the most common, at, most common application is the LMV52240. Again, all of the above features, but extends control now to five actuators and includes variable frequency drive and oxygen trim 
along with additional software features, such as time or temperature-based FGR, flue gas recirculation. Fourth and final is the LMB52440, which as along with it, all of the above mentioned features, plus it includes a temperature compensated start. This feature was added for units that employ mesh style premix burner heads. During pre-purge, the air temperature is measured and the ignition settings are adjusted to compensate for the current temperature. Each LMB5 installation will require a transformer that has three secondaries. This provides power for the LMB5's dual processors, the CAN bus network, which includes the LMB5, the AZL display, all of the actuators, sometimes referred to as servos, and finally, the uh, PLL module if used for oxygen trim. This AZL is also called an HMI. It is the keyboard display unit that can be used with any of the LMB5 versions, past or present. It offers seven international languages, a four line backlit display, a PC port interface for backup and optional programming. And while it can be programmed with a PC, typical commissioning on the LMB5 is done solely with the AZL. And finally, along with the burner and operating system CAN bus components, it also has a standard equipment, a Modbus port for BMS integration. All parts of the LMB5 system are sold individually, and terminal set options are shown throughout the section one of the technical instructions. The LMB5 is the brain of the system. It, it, while the LMB5 is the brain of the system, the actuators are the muscle. Four torque ranges are featured and shown here, and the SQM5 units can be ordered with NEMA 4 kits. The SQM9, is NEMA 4 with no additional shaft seal required. As the torque values increase, so do the minimum running times. All units will operate at the same speed dictated by the LMB5's program settings up to 120 second ramp times. All units can be addressed as needed and will follow the LMB's program for clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. These actuators feature repeatable resolution of one tenth of a degree positioning with dual and redundant position feedback, utilizing factory calibrated Hall effect sensors for a long life, safe and trouble-free operation. Accessories include a large range of flexible angular and parallel zero lash couplings. The range covers various temperature applications like FGR and sizes to accommodate various torque requirements. These are complemented by bracket kits and standoffs for OEMs to use or to retrofit existing burners. SCC offers a complete valve actuator assembly options, often called VA assemblies. Specific kits are designed for various air applications like Lacoma louvers or Cleaver Brooks rotary air damper. We have a patented gas butterfly valve, the VKG, for natural gas, propane, and or digester, available in metric and MPT thread options, as well as three different port sizes for any given pipe size. Oil assemblies for the Hawk valve or Cleaver Brooks oil controller, high temperature kits for FGR control, as well as other specific OEM kits. The LMV5 system operates the actuators, display, and oxygen trim by means of a closed CAN bus network. This allows great flexibility when wiring actuators that can be connected in any order. All CAN bus wiring must use specific CAN bus cable designed to ensure fast, robust, and safe communication between the devices. Note that this special wire has a heavy gauge power wire, the red and black shown above, along with a separately shielded twisted pair twisted specifically to minimize noise on CAN bus, and the wire can be supplied in 100 or 500 foot lengths. Flame detection options include basic flame rod input, IR or infrared scanners, QRI shown here with self-check built-in amplifiers, forward or side viewing options. Infrared is the lowest cost, most commonly used scanner. 
UV scanners are also offered, QRA shown here, with self-check and forward view options. Added benefits of using the UV is its ability to ignore the glowing refractory. The UV unit also requires a pre-made cable. Most of the LMV buys will use the built-in PID control and can be wired to any zero to 10 volt or four to 20 milliamps steam sensor or for hot water applications, any platinum or nickel 100 or 1000 ohm sensor. If a high temperature thermocouple is required, a temperature sending unit must also be provided to provide a zero to 10 volt or four to 20 signal. See the SCC website or contact sales for the many options SCC can provide. Whenever you use a steam pressure sensor on your system, be sure to provide a safe siphon loop, also called a pigtail, to prevent overheating of the sensor. All of the components of the LMV5 system, with the exception of FGR, are rated for 140 degrees Fahrenheit maximum ambient temperatures. A four to 20 milliamp signal is more accurate as the wire length will not affect the milliamp signal like it does on a zero to 10 volt signal but it will not tolerate a negative pressure. Zero to 10 volt will tolerate a negative pressure. Four to 20 also detects when the connection is broke. Zero to 10 does not detect that. If a four to 20 pressure sensor is used and the system is cools, oftentimes a vacuum will be created. The pressure sensor will respond with a below four milliamp signal. While no permanent damage is caused to the sensor, a lockout will occur until the vacuum is relieved. The use of a vacuum breaker is recommended or simply use the zero to 10 volt sensor. There are many great reasons to use a variable frequency drive, a VFD on your burner. Number one reason is safety. And the LMV5 uses a closed loop speed feedback system to provide the safest operation of any burner. By using and requiring a motor shaft speed sensor, RPM is tracked through the entire firing range from pre-purge, ignition, through modulation, post-purge, and shutdown. It also detects direction of rotation. So if service work is done and a three-phase motor spins backwards, the LMV5 reports the fault and prevents unsafe operation. SCC Inc. also offers a full line of pre-programmed, readily available Yaskawa brand VFDs, along with options like braking, line and or load con conditioners and enclosures. It's a good time to list the four benefits of a burner that is equipped with a variable frequency drive. Number one reason, again, is safety. No price can be placed on that. While the air pressure switch is important and a long-standing safety device, it really only protects you at low fire where a drop is detected. The speed sensor provides safety at all firing rate ranges. Second reason is the cost of electricity, the power of the amps that goes up by the cube of the motor's RPM. When the variable frequency dive reduces the RPM, you reduce the amperage. Payback is typically about a year. Third is you finally, is you get better control. Slowing the combustion fan down to low fire, the air damper exhibits, exhibits much better control. And a final is a reduction in the boiler room noise and all the wear and tear that goes with it. In today's energy cost conscious, environmentally aware world, O2 trim is a great option. When ambient air temperature changes by 30 degrees Fahrenheit, O2 shifts by 1%. Hot air drives O2 down, causing dangerously low O2 levels, or simply prevents the technician from setting the combustion as low as he or she would like to increase efficiency or reduce emissions. Cold air increases O2, causing efficiency drops and or combustion issues. When adding O2 trim to an LMV5 system, a PLL module is required and mounted within 300 feet to the LMV5 and within 30 feet to the QGO oxygen sensor. Next is the O2 sensor itself, the QGO, suitable for natural gas or light oil. A QGO 21 
is also offered for heavy oil. O2 is not suitable for digester gas operation. Third, the last element is a collector, the AGO. It gets welded into the stack and holds the QGO oxygen sensor. A great option offered by SCC is a weldless collector. This feature features a gasket and the mounting hardware. Highly recommended um, the use of the PC software for the LMB5 is called the ACS 450. It's a free software to SEC and customers in the US, Canada, Central and South America. Use the SEC website to register or contact the sales group. Biggest feature is backup, restore and documentation of the system. This allows for quick startup service, recovery of any system, a typical thumb drive can hold hundreds of job sites. Additionally, you can, if desired, program the LMB5 with the software as well. Connection to the AZL is with a null modem cable shown above, available through SCC. Today's PCs rarely have a nine pin, also called a DB9 serial port, but instead are equipped with a USB port. That being the case, a USB to serial converter cable is also required in addition to the null modem cable. They must use an FTDI chipset. This is available through SEC, or if you simply Google Amazon, USB, serial, FTDI, you'll get many choices and they all work as long as they have the FTDI chipset. Lastly, but certainly not least, is a long, long list of global approvals of the LMB5 system. This includes a SIL-3 safety integrity level. And while you may never be asked to provide a control with this listing, it shows the global reach of Siemens and the extensive list of approvals and global acceptance of the product. Record shows that after OEMs, and after marketers all over the world have used the LMB5 in tens of thousands of installations and never have had a single combustion incident. This reflects the engineering, the safety redundancy, and the programming of the LMB5 system. Join us again for the LMB5 102 next Tuesday, June 9th at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, where we'll be talking about wiring in detail. Thanks. Back to you, Aaron.